because we take a lot of measurements in chemistry, we'll deal with a lot with we'll deal a lot. We'll deal a lot with numbers. Um, but just having numbers doesn't tell us anything. You can't say it was ten, it was five. Well, it was ten what? It was five what? So every number that we'll ever deal with in chemistry is going to have units, with the exception of two. Um, and you won't deal with them a great deal until you get to AP chemistry. And we call those naked numbers. But every unit will have some, sorry, every number will have some unit attached to it. And a unit describes what exactly we're talking about. So if we're talking in two-dimensional terms, up, down, left, right, we're talking in base units, the simplest uh, understanding of one thing or another. The simplest understanding of length, uh, a distance, we measure in meters, which we symbolize with the letter M. If we're talking how much stuff there is, the base unit we're going to use in chemistry is kilograms. And if you look in your no or sorry, is if you look in your notes, I've erased that and rewritten grams. Our base unit is going to be grams. Kilograms is, is a is a add-on to that. But our base unit for how much stuff there is is going to be the gram. Temperature, the base unit, the simplest understanding is Kelvin. Now to get an understanding of what Kelvin is, Kelvin is unlike what you're used to seeing. You're used to talking about degrees. Well, temperature is a measure of how much the molecules are actually moving. So for the air around you, temperature is how much the molecules in that air are moving. It's their kinetic energy. However, degrees is a relative scale. 10 degrees Celsius does not mean that you have half the amount of energy, the molecules are moving half as fast as 20 degrees Celsius. There's a big difference, there's a gap there. And a long time ago, the scale was reinvented to reflect the movement of particles uh, for temperature. And we reset the scale at zero Kelvin. At zero Kelvin is a temperature called absolute zero. At this temperature, all movement of particles stops. They have no kinetic energy. And it's a temperature we've only theorized about. That temperature is at negative 273 Celsius. And so zero Kelvin is negative 273. So anytime you want to find the, the, the Kelvin temperature for any Celsius reading, you simply add 273 to it. If you want to find the Celsius of any Kelvin temperature, subtract 273. So you are probably sitting in a room that's air conditioned, and it's 70 degrees around you. So that's 70 degrees Fahrenheit which is approximately 25 degrees Celsius. Well, that means that the air around you, its temperature in Kelvin, a measure of its kinetic energy, is 298 Kelvin. The base unit, the simplest understanding of time, is the second. The amount of substance is the mole. And again, this requires a little explanation, because just a few seconds ago, I said that the amount of stuff we're going to symbolize, we're going to talk about as mass, which is in grams. So how can I say that again and call it something different? Well, I'm saying it different based upon a scale. Um, mass, we're going to be dealing with grams when we have large quantities of something. But when we're dealing with atoms, small, infinitesimally small amounts of something, we'll deal with the mole. And a mole is like saying a dozen. If I say I have a dozen roses, you know that I have 12 roses. If I say I have three pairs of shoes, well, you know each pair represents two, so I have six pairs of shoes. In chemistry, the mole is like saying a dozen. One mole is 6.02 times 10 to the 22nd of whatever you're talking about. And we're going to be talking, usually when we talk about moles, we'll be talking about atoms or molecules. And we have an entire unit devoted to the mole. So don't get stressed out if you're, if you're having trouble wrapping your head around it. We'll get to it eventually. The base unit for electrical current is the amp. And we are going to briefly run through electrochemistry in pre-AP. In AP chemistry, you'll spend an entire month 
on electrochemistry and you will have great, great, good, fun times with the amp. Um, but till then, just keep it in the back of your mind that that's the base unit, a simplest understanding. We will not get into light in this class and therefore we will never use the base unit for how bright it is which is measured in candela which is the amount of light produced by one candle. When you take a, a, a base unit and you want more of it, you have a large amount of it, it's easier to simply add a prefix than to say all of those zeros. Rather than say I have a thousand meters, I can say I have a, kilo a kilometer. Rather than say I have one one hundredths of a gram, I can say I have a centigram. And you probably know these from your uh, days in biology. The big ones most people know are kilo hecto deci, deca, sorry, kilo hecto deca deci centi milli. They go thousand, one hundred, ten, and then in between the two Ds, deca and deci, you have your base unit. So you would have meters or grams. Then it goes deci would be one tenth of those, one one hundredth would be centi, and then one one millionth would be milli. And you can convert between the two using the step method that you learned in uh, high school biology. But in pre-AP chemistry, we expect you to go a little bit further than that, and you, need now, you now need to know beyond King Henry died drinking chocolate milk, we expect you to go all the way up to giga and all the way down to nano. So it goes giga, mega, kilo, hecto, he hecta, des, deca, deci, centi, milli, micro, nano. You can remember this as King Henry died drinking chocolate milk. Well, that's the six you've remember, mem memorized so far. We expand it all the way up to giga by going, gosh, my King Henry died units drinking chocolate milk and then micro is uh, Monday and nano is night gosh my King Henry died drinking units chocolate milk Monday night now each step between kilo hecta deca deci centi milli represents a one movement of a decimal place Ooh, went too far back one movement of a decimal place. When you go past that, there's actually three movements of a decimal place in order to get up to mega or up to giga or down to nano or down to micro. Those are three, rep three steps between. So kilo is a thousand, but if you want to go up to mega, it takes a hundred kilobytes to make one megabyte takes a hundred megabytes to make one kilo or gigabyte. So you'll take three steps on your step method to go up to mega or three steps down to go down to uh, micro. The last thing I need to talk about is that people usually get wrong. I'm flying all over the place. Is the unit symbol for micro is the Greek letter mu which looks like a U, but with a little tail in the front. That's a Mu. That's a Mu, Mario. Next. Now when you take a base unit, and you think about it in three-dimensional terms, you reach what's called the derived unit. So how much space something takes up takes into account its length, its width, and its height. So this is what we call its volume. It's three dimensions because length, width, and height are left, right, up, down, front, and back. So volume is a derived unit. And the base unit for volume is liters. But where does liters come from? Since volume is length, width, and height, its base unit is actually meters squared, or the simple uh, volume of it is meters is meters cubed, my apologies. Meters cubed relates to milliliters by 
the centimeter cubed, or the cc. If you have one centimeter cubed, we also sometimes call this one cc, and if you're ever in the pre-medical field, you need to know that one cc is the same thing as one milliliter, and that's how much space there is, uh, how much space the substance takes up, is its volume. Density is how much stuff there is in a set amount of space. So for example, this block here has a density of 24 circles per block, if you want to think of it that way. Uh, it's how much stuff there is in a set amount of space. So for example, your classroom, we could take it for something as simple as your classroom being that there are 25 students in your class, so there are 25 students per classroom. That's stuff in a set space. In chemistry and in science, we talk about density in terms of how many atoms or particles there are in a particular volume. And we talk about it in terms of its mass, how many, how many grams there are in a particular milliliters, typically. Denser objects sink below less dense objects. So for example, the reason that oil floats on water, or one of the reasons oil floats on water, is that oil is less dense than water. One of the reasons that um, you can't fly through the air is that you're denser than air. Even water, when it turns to ice, actually water is one of the few substances that when cooled becomes less dense. This is why ice floats on top of water. Remember that density is an intensive property, which means it's independent of how much stuff that you have. So whether you have a gallon of, a, of water or a, and a block of ice or a single ice cube, the single ice cube is going to be less dense than the gallon of water. It's independent of how much stuff you have. You can calculate density a couple ways. First off, you always want to find the mass, and you can use a scale to do that. The gram scales in the classroom are excellent at doing this, and we do so electronically. The volume, there are a couple ways you can find the volume. If you have a regularly shaped object, like a cube, you can find the volume using geometry, with a cube that's length times width times height, or simply one of the measurements cu uh, cubed. If you have an irregularly shaped object, you can do it via water displacement. And we calculate this by first filling a beaker with water, then placing the object in it. The amount of distance that the, not beaker, that the graduate cylinder's water increased is the volume of the object. This is called the Archimedes, this is Archimedes principle. An object's volume is equal to the water that it displaces, since two objects can't occupy the same space at the same time. We use water because water has a density of 1.0 exactly at 25 degrees Celsius. And since we know exactly what water's density is, it allows us to know, for comparison, uh, exactly what the volume of something is. Water has far less impurities in it than trying to use a pure sample of something else. And plus, it's readily available and cheap. And we like cheap. Yay, public education. <laughs>